Hello all, in this video I'll be discussing what all modifications you will have to do when you go for a hardware software co-design uh, with Ovitis. So I'm using one of my previous examples, uh, this video on hardware co software co-design one, uh, where we try to turn on LEDs uh, using software running on the processor. Okay. So the source code for this is already available from GitHub. So I'm starting from that point. So the hardware development flow, uh, that is exactly the same since we are still using Vivado. Uh, so this is 2020.1 version. Uh, so the block design flow, it is exactly same. So you can uh, follow the same video for that. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I have already downloaded uh, the source code. So this is the Vivado project. And previously we have two folders here. One is where all the source code for Vivado is stored. And there is this .sdk folder where we store all the source code for software and other files for your SDK. Okay, so what I do first is I am going to open this Vivado project uh, using my new Vivado. And Vivado will be asking to upgrade it because previously it was version 2017. Uh, so I am at 2020. So if you are opening an old project of Vivado in a new version, uh, this is the usual procedure. You ask to upgrade it and most probably Vivado will be able to upgrade it. If that is not the case, uh, how to do it, I have discussed in another video. So here you'll have to ask to report the IP status. So he will show you what all modifications uh, in the IP version has happened between uh, 2017 and 2020. So these three IPs have uh, got changed, upgraded. So you will have to upgrade all those IPs. Once IP upgrade is completed, just uh, make sure block design is still correct by checking this one validation. Just make sure address editor, uh, the address has been assigned to the peripheral. So if both are fine, you can just go ahead and ask to generate the bit stream. And he'll be generating the bit stream. And we have successfully generated the bitstream. After that, you will have to export your hardware, which is similar to what we used to do for SDK also. So we can go to files here, export, export hardware. And now a wizard will be coming. Previously, there were only two options, just export to SDK, and you can choose whether to include the bitstream or not. Uh, here you can choose the platform type. Uh, currently, we'll be using this fixed platform. Uh, not this expandable one. And you can choose whether to include bitstream or not here. Uh, Pre-synthesis means here yeah, he'll be just exporting that address mapping information, the XSA file. He won't be including the bitstream, but better we can program from SDK itself, so, or Vitis itself, so we can include the bitstream also here. And finally, this time he will be explicitly asking uh, where to export, where to store this XSA file. So previously there was an option like store it at the default location. So he'll be automatically storing in that dot SDK folder, uh, Vivado. Now it is not the case. You'll have to explicitly say where to store it. So better to store it in the uh, same project folder uh, somewhere. So I am here. So maybe I can create a new folder here and put it there. So let's say, okay, why it is SDK because I will have Whitis later and I'm going to uh, store everything for Whitis there. So here he's saying like the XSA file will be returned to uh, so and so location. So I want to store it in this location and just say finish. Now if you go to your project folder, uh, he'll be generating that XSA file here in one minute. After that previous Vivada, there was an option to launch SDK from here itself. Now that option has been gone. You have to go to tools and from there you have to choose launch Vitis IDE. Either you can do like this or you can directly uh, start Vitis from your start button. Now when Vitis comes up, he will be asking for the work directory. And again this time, so unlike SDK, he won't by default go to a dot stk folder so you can see this dot stk folder uh, that has been deprecated uh, from vivado version 2020 onwards okay so this folder is not created anymore by vivado so since i already created this folder i am choosing that as my 
uh, work directory and we will launch white is there so personally i feel uh, sdk flow was a little bit more better uh, but maybe signings they will include those options uh, to reward later and again unlike sdk he is not going to automatically detect the xsf file you will have to explicitly start a, a new application project like our previous tutorial and when you come here you choose create a new uh, platform and this time you have to browse and show the xsf file which was exported from vivado okay so since we are in the same folder uh, it was much easier and uh, boot component yeah it was optional as i mentioned maybe you don't want that fsbl and here we can give some name to our application okay hello uh, hardware okay software something like that cortex a9 and core 0 i am choosing again standalone os we are choosing and uh, we'll start with an empty application and finish now from this point onwards uh, things are quite similar to sdk uh, if you wish you can uh, start a new c file and start coding there the x parameters dot h uh, header file which was generated by sdk previously is still generated by whitis only thing is uh, like i mentioned in the previous tutorial when whitis comes up he won't be compiling any of the bsp file or drivers or your source code automatically you will have to explicitly ask to compile it now since i asked to start an empty project there is nothing under source folder so since i already have file i will just import it otherwise you can go to file and uh, start coding there since i have the file from my previous project i will choose import source now this time uh, sdk there were a lot of options and file systems was one of the options uh, currently white is he shows only this option file system so you can browse and go to the folder uh, where we have that source code so previous one it was inside my dot sdk folder led control inside source folder from that just import the c code linger script he automatically creates so we don't want that and just say finish and now we have the code here so i am putting back these two things so basically it will turn on all the leds and will also print hello on our terminal and uh, after saving it remember to compile it build it so build project since this time my aim is to program the fpg also uh, just right clicking and saying uh, launch on hardware won't work we'll have to make a run configuration so let's go to run configuration and you can choose single application debug from here and all the settings he does automatically standalone all these are fine application he automatically detected the elf file and under target setup uh, program fpj is automatically checked and you need this also this uh, post config initialization that is also required because now we have a peripheral and if the uh, peripheral need to get that clock from ps the post config should be run okay so all these are required then let's check taratum also whether the hello print is coming and you can just say run so he's programming the fpj make sure the blue led turns on on your board and now i can see all the leds have turned on and i can also see hello print here okay after this you may try with a different value uh, you can try to bring the leds by turning it on and off and putting some delay in between but again remember after changing the source code now we need to recompile it okay so this is the only difference when you go with uh, older version of vivado and sdk and new version of vivado along with whitis thank you